Hey there, my name is Heidi and I recruit product managers and I'm here today to do a resume review of Tanya. <laughs> Tanya, like so many people, is a newcomer to Canada and she has really amazing experience as a B2B SaaS product manager. And we're going to help her reimagine her resume today and talk through some really practical ideas of how to create a better product story on her resume so that this helps her on her journey to finding her first Canadian-based product management opportunity. Our goal today is that this is going to help you uh, who is watching this video reimagine your experience because product management is a unique function and there's a lot of ways to approach the resume. So I hope this is helpful to you today. So here we go. Okay, let's dive in Tanya's resume. But before we get into the details about what she has um, shared with us and how we are going to reimagine this, I want to talk about a couple of big things to think about as we approach her resume. So first of all, product managers, I want you to be thinking about your resume as a product. And, and in doing so, thinking about the user persona for whom you are creating this product and the, the frictionless experience that you are solving for, for them and the value that you're trying to add for their experience of your product. So the, the user persona who you're creating this product for is, is obviously your future boss. So a CPO, a VP product, or if you're applying to a startup, a founder CEO. You're also creating it for a recruiter. Could be an internal talent acquisition person or a third party recruiter like me, like our firm. And, and these uh, user personas have a couple of things in common. First of all, they're all time starved. No one has enough time to review in detail every single applicant who applies for a product opportunity. And because they're time starved, all of these people are going through a resume quickly. No one is pausing to read paragraphs. They are scanning them, scanning them in record time trying to identify of the person they are looking at who who clo who closest has solved for something that is similar to what they are being hired to solve for who has some kind of transferable product experiences that could be applied to what someone needs to hire okay and they're doing it fast so you are having to capture the attention of this user persona fast 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 and move them to action towards you. The outcome you are trying to get to is a meeting. You want them to have a meeting with you so that they can get to know you beyond this piece of paper. You are never going to be able to address everything on this document, but there needs to be enough of what they care about to say, okay, I want to meet with Tanya. If I only have three appointment times available for next week, Tanya better be in one of them. Okay. The other commonality amongst this user persona group is confusion. Many of them are confused about what is the difference between product management, project management, product marketing, and, and program management. Unlike our firm who specializes in product, a lot of internal talent acquisition people don't. So, you know, they're juggling many searches. They might have a customer success role. Of, we need to hire a couple of BDRs. Of course, we need to hire software engineers. Oh, and by the way, we need a product manager. What's that? Okay. And they're trying to figure it out while they do the job, which slows things down. Okay. So, so these are the challenges. These are the people for whom you are trying to now quickly get to the point, deliver value, and, and create a frictionless experience with this product, this resume that you have created and move them to action to meet with you. Okay. So with that as a backdrop and a foundation, now let's look at Tanya's resume. Now, if we, if we think about what a persona user cares about, they, they care about understanding this stuff. Hey, where did Tanya work? And what did she achieve there? What was the product she worked on? What did she do here? And, and, and how does that align to, to the person I'm trying to hire? 
anything that delays the user from getting to that which they care about, I call filler. And that's kind of what this stuff is right here. You know, there's no way that anybody could write a summary of a summary and, and it be effective, right? Because this is the summary. This is the summary of Tanya's experience at this company called CRMM. What is this summary? Well, it looks like she's attempting to talk about a few product related things. And then she's also providing some, some softer skills about things that she likes and things that she does. But, you know, this stuff is, is taking up prime real estate. And, and in a world of, we don't have a lot of real estate to communicate our story and we're trying to really move the person to action. We want to maximize this. I, I want you also to take a look at the amount of content above the fold. If this is all I see, I actually don't see a lot of what she actually was working on as a product manager. I see very little. I see more of the stuff that I don't really care about. It's taking up a lot of real estate. Does this compel me to scroll down? Well, these are subjective opinions. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But wouldn't it be a shame if if this section was longer and I really didn't see much of anything. And so I decide, well, you know, she's not really curating her words and, and I don't really see anything that quickly grabs at me. And I'm sort of confused because she's not really talking product. She's telling me about how she likes to take long walks around Toronto. I guess I'll close this resume and go on to one of the other 100 applicants who I'm also trying to get through tonight. Okay. So let's talk about this, this summary of a summary. My recommendation always is that we begin a resume, not with a summary, but with, a, with an objective. Because an objective can be boiled down to one sentence that ultimately then moves up this content and gets it higher on prime real estate and might give me some more content that I actually care about, which is what did you do as a product manager for this company? An objective might sound something like this. Seeking the opportunity to join an early stage company and deliver value to, to enterprise customers in the banking vertical. Or seeking the opportunity to drive delight and, and user engagement of fintech products at scale. Or seeking the opportunity to join a B2B SaaS company and, and deliver product best practices that drive user growth. Whatever. One sentence that that summarizes what it is that you're trying to do spoken in product language so that we can really get to what counts, which is where did you work and what did you achieve there? And so with that, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how Tanya talks about that. Starting with this opening section here. Now, I love the fact that our first resume review is someone who has recently relocated to Canada because we need more product managers in Canada. We don't have enough. And so we welcome Tanya into the marketplace. And, and one of the things that is common among candidates, one of the roadblocks actually to many candidates who are entering the Canadian market is that we just don't know who some of these employers are and what their products are and how they, who their customers are and users and all of that stuff. And so as a, as a candidate, you want to be communicating a little more directly than perhaps what Tanya has done here. Because one of the things that no candidate wants the user of a resume to do is to leave their resume and go to a website to figure it out. Okay. So Tanya, we don't want to leave your resume. We don't want to be left to figure out what this company does and what product you specifically were managing because now we're, we're moving away from you and into a whole other rabbit trail of, of web searching. Also, ed, in this example, EdTech, there's, there's lots of pieces of EdTech. When I think of EdTech, having recruited in the EdTech category many times, EdTech most commonly means software that's used by either K-12 schools or higher education. But when I spoke with Tanya, I learned, everyone, that that's not what CRMM does. CRMM is actually a B2B SaaS platform, which is sold to large enterprises like banks. And banks use this software platform as the LMS for their employees. Wow. So that's kind of like what D2L does. 
But we would never know that just from what we see here. It's not clear. We're, we're, we're confusing our user persona. They might make incorrect assumptions, all of which hurts you as the candidate. So we instead would want to present this section as follows. First of all, we would want to take out location because that's not really important. We, we currently live in a post-COVID world where location should be, hopefully is for more companies than maybe it is, secondary. And we also don't want to add the additional roadblock that might come if someone who, I don't know, sees this, doesn't want to take the time to take a closer look at this stuff. So let's just remove it. Let's give them reasons instead to be uh, excited about the problem that you're solving, not the city or the country in which your, com your former company is based. Okay. Next, let's remove the website. We don't want that. Let's replace this with the years of employment. So that should be CRMM, comma, the dates that you worked at this company. And then let's provide a sentence that communicates what the product and the business is. A B2B SaaS company delivering value to large enterprises such as banks providing an LMS to train and develop their employees or whatever. One sentence that more accurately describes what the actual product is. CRM is a B2B SaaS company whose LMS platform is sold to large enterprises such as banks. Because a description like that helps the user persona who's never heard of this company before connect the dots. Oh, she has experience working on a B2B SaaS platform. Oh, it's large enterprise. Oh my gosh, it's an LMS system. Okay. Then let's take a look at the content. Now, I like the fact, I really like the fact that Tanya has chosen bullet points in how she presents her content. That's really important because we've already mentioned how time starved the user persona is and no one's going to read paragraphs. So we definitely want to keep this content bullet pointed, but I'd like to suggest a reimagining of the actual, some of the actual content here. One of the most common mistakes that people make when writing a resume is they actually regurgitate their job description and they call it a resume. And that's a little bit of what Tanya has done. So let's take a look at this sentence, for example. Used A-B testing to increase monthly active user metric. Cur in, the, in the current state of this statement, I don't see the metrics. What, what were the metrics? What were they before? What were they after you applied A-B testing? And was this a, like a one-off thing? <laughs> Or was this part of a whole undertaking that you, um, you know, championed and focused on to drive up the metrics? This statement as its own is closer to that of a job description. You will be responsible for increasing monthly active users using A-B testing. But a resume would say within, within six months, increase monthly active users from five to 50 by applying you know, A-B testing on a two-week, three-week, blah, 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 cadence, whatever. We want to see numbers, metrics, outcomes if we're going to have it on a resume. We also want to leverage uh, action words, okay? So used is kind of passive. It doesn't really apply that you achieved, ideated, championed, you know, launched, pivoted, we want action-oriented action words that give us a sense of who, 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 something's really happening here. This person really achieved many things, okay? The other um, statement that I'll point out here is, is this last one. Um, I, I'm not going to emphasize this um, because I can fully understand that when someone's relocated to Canada, there's kind of a, you know, the, the English language skills, you know, need to be 
always focused on you if you've just relocated to Canada you definitely want to get some make some friends make some champions some mentors who will proofread your resumes because this should probably be led brainstorming but we're not going to talk about all of the gram grammatical stuff but we're just going to talk about the fact that again rote product specs is is a job description function. It doesn't belong on a resume because no kidding, you're a product manager. <laughs> you and everyone. It's not really an accomplishment focused thing. If we're going to talk about that you drove execution to create new features, well, what were they? And did you like did you actually execute new features because if you're not telling me what those features are and how they added value and how they grew customers, maybe you didn't. Maybe you tried. And there's a lot of people out there trying, but they actually don't deliver new features because for various reasons, you know, it just never launched. So if you actually executed the delivery of net new features and, it, and, and, and as a result, you added three large enterprise banks, at, which resulted in another 10 million of ARR or whatever, we want to point that out. Led brainstorming. Why? Why did you do that? Who was a part of this brainstorming? Was this a one-off event? Was this an ongoing thing? What resulted from these brainstorming sessions that drove value, delivered results, ideated, championed, reimagined the experience? Um, there's so much that this hints at that leads, that gives me questions, okay? And, and again, we want to bring clarity through the resume, okay? We want to talk about outcomes and achievements. That's what a resume is. A resume is you bragging about all of the epic things that you achieved. Because that is likely the reason why you will be hired to do epic things. Okay? So that's my feedback at a high level with some detail about Tanya's resume. If you are someone who thinks that, hey, you could really help Tanya, maybe you know someone who's hiring someone with Tanya's skills of enterprise B2B SaaS of a learning management system used by enterprises, we're going to include her hyper li her uh, LinkedIn link, drop her a note and see if, uh, if you can make a connection with Tanya to help her out and in doing so helping out your company. If you have found this resume critique helpful, maybe the lights went on about your personal resume, I would love to hear from you. Please encourage me as I encourage you. Okay. A resume like your career is never finished. It's a long game. Think about your products. Your product is never done. Same with a resume. There's always opportunities to reimagine it, to make it stronger, to make it more effective and to communicate in a more frictionless way to a user persona whose attention you're trying to capture. And I hope that this helps you do that. Have an awesome day and we will see you in the next resume critique.